Welcome back everyone, I'm Tyler with Ligari. Um, I'm really excited to show you this project because we'll be going over an existing countertop we did five years ago. That's right, five years old. You guys are gonna see how well it's held up and everything. Um, as you can see, it's still super high gloss. Um, it does have scratches and scuff marks. It doesn't have our top coat. Um, if you do apply our top coats, it would even have held up a lot better. So keep that in mind, but just know when you buy our products, you're getting the best that you can get. So why don't you just kind of show them how this turned out and how well it's held up. They don't use cutting boards, they don't use anything. Um, this is my mother-in-law's counter, so I told her to just abuse it, use it, and let's see how it wore. And it, and it, and it handled very well to, to no cutting boards, setting hot pans, all kinds of stuff on it. We don't recommend cutting on the counters. Um, you want to treat them like a high-end counter or setting hot pans, but this was kind of like a test piece for us. And again, it's five years old. So we're gonna re, re change the color. They painted the cabinets, did the floor, stainless steel appliances. So now we're gonna do a silver base, black and white highlights, maybe some accent sprays, stuff like that. We'll be replacing the backsplash because that's not gonna go with the new colors. Uh, but you're gonna watch it all right here. Welcome back everyone. We got a great video for you today. We're going to be coating over an existing counter that we did five years ago. Um, as you can see, if you've watched that video, they painted the cabinets, redid the flooring, they got new uh, stainless steel appliances. So uh, these counters are kind of a little bit outdated with the theme they're going for, more contemporary. We're going to be doing a silver base, black highlights with a little bit of white, um, and then maybe some marble spray, we'll see. So what, what we're going to do we're gonna remove the backsplash because this isn't gonna go with the new colors. We'll do a new backsplash. We're gonna sand the counters, coat them, um, tape everything off. We're gonna show you the full process. Um, we'll even show you how to take the sinks out because they're gonna get a new sink, pretty much redo everything in here. What we'll do now is I'll start taking the sink out. Um, this has been silicone in, so I'm gonna cut it. We're gonna cut around it, get under, tape everything out. Uh, this faucet's been leaking, so what we're gonna do is we'll probably have a little damage behind here. We'll have to repair that. Uh, but it should be pretty simple. Um, we, won't, we won't know until we get into it. But uh, and this does have a garbage disposal, so we'll be taking all that out, taking the plumbing out. Always make sure you turn your water off before you start doing the water lines, um, and we'll get right to it. So I'm just cutting this so it pulls a little easier with the razor blade. And since uh, silicone was used, we gotta make sure we get everything off of this. All the silicone's gotta be removed or it can affect the epoxy. As you all probably know, silicone doesn't stick to, doesn't let anything stick to it. That's why people like to use it around uh, sinks. And if you're going over an existing epoxy coating, always make sure you sand it really good, scuff it up, and that's what we're gonna do here too. All right, so now we're gonna go under here. I'm gonna start unscrewing stuff, getting everything unhooked, and then we'll pop the sink out. Okay, so we've got everything unhooked down here, the uh, garbage disposal, the water lines, they're off, make sure they're off. And now we've gone around and got under with the screwdriver and popped it up everywhere, so now it's loose. So now what you wanna do is just pull it straight out. This is kind of a heavy sink, so I might need to get a hand, uh, but. We're gonna, I'm gonna attempt to just pull this straight out. Just like that. And then there you go, that's how you pull out a sink. So same thing with the backsplash. Uh, it's good to cut a line right here so you're not peeling up your paint. So I'm just gonna run a razor blade just on that edge. And even though you run a razor blade, doesn't mean you're not gonna peel up some paint, so don't be worried if you do, you just have to touch that up. Make sure you get cut through it all the way. I'll take a putty knife, try to get behind it. And this was done with sticky tape. As you 
as you can see it works really well. It's actually pulling, it's just a sticky tape you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's. It's double sided so you stick it on then you stick your tile on then you grout it. Once you get it going it should start to pop off a little easier. That's basically a seam. So that's kind of what we want to get off. We'll clean this up a little um, and we'll be able to put a new backsplash on. But as you can tell, that sticky tape works pretty freaking good. Double sided tape. So I'll just keep it this and then we'll show you. I know some other spots like. Obviously where we had some water damage here, this is going to come off a lot easier. See that? You see we got some mold here, we definitely want to address that. Um, and since it's just on the wall, I'm not going to touch any of that. We're going to take that straight to the trash. Let's see if we got any more over here. That's really the problem child there. And that's kind of what we figured because we had a leaky faucet and the, the laminate just peeled right up. So we're gonna wanna, we're gonna have to replace this board, um, do a little bit of repairs here before we can coat the counter. All right guys, so like with any remodel, you always run into stuff that's it's unforeseen. Like obviously the mold, we didn't expect mold. Maybe we expected some water damage on the wood here. Um, also what's happening is the laminates peeling off the wood. So the epoxy's not peeling off. The actual laminate, you can see where water got all back there. Well, I don't want to just do a, a shoddy repair. So we're going to peel up as much of this as we can. If it all peels up, it all peels up. We'll, we'll deal with that, but I don't want to coat. You never want to coat over laminate that's peeling off the wood. But as you can see, everywhere it's chipped up, our epoxy stuck to that laminate. So very impressive product, but you never want to coat over a substrate that's peeling up or, or not structurally sound. So I'm going to just start peeling this up. And we'll see where it takes us. As you can see, we got some water damage here. So honestly, to do this right, I'm gonna probably just wind up peeling all this off. But notice how even where it breaks, the epoxy doesn't peel off the formica. It's bonded to the actual formica. So if you ever wonder, if you ever wonder, even, I mean, look, this whole thing broke off. The epoxy didn't chip off or nothing there. So it's actually fused into that formica and that's what, what you can expect with our primer. So very, very impressive. Uh, but yeah, we did not plan on having to peel all this up. So what I'll do, and if I get to here and it's stuck down, we'll just patch all this. Maybe we gotta, we gotta replace this wood no matter what, but we'll see how this goes. Again, everywhere I break, that epoxy is stuck. If you had a coating that wasn't a good coating or wasn't bonded well, it'd be chipping up with the Formica, off of the Formica. I mean, yeah, this is peeling off so easy. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to coat, coat 
code over that anyways. So I'm just gonna go around and, and see what we get up. I'm assuming I'll be able to peel all this up since that peeled up like that. Actually, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna vacuum this up because if I pop a piece off and shoot a bunch of ground everywhere, that ain't gonna be cool. Um, that's what's cool about our kits is they don't just go over for mica or wood. It's pretty much any hard surface. Laminate, for mica, wood, tile. Uh, we've had a lot of people go over their quartz counters. Um, a lot of quartz is outdated. Um, also, granite, stuff like that. So, pretty much know that you can do our coatings over any hard surface. It just has to be a hard surface. You don't want to coat over something soft. So when, when you peel it for mica, you're gonna have these seams. We're gonna have to fill these holes, putty these seams, sand it all smooth, so there's a little more uh, prep work going into now that we're ripping the for mica off, but that's all right. And I do recommend, I'm not looking at this when I'm peeling it up in case one of these breaks off and flies up. I'm, I'm looking away or closing my eyes. You probably wanna wear uh, safety glasses. Take note how flexible this epoxy is. It's a rock hard surface, but it still has flex to it. I mean, that's definitely got some flex. using our primers, there, it's made to stick to Formica. You saw how much flex and force I pulled on this and it didn't peel off or chip. Okay, before we put our new board back in here, I wanna treat this mold. So I'm gonna spray this, uh, it's called mold control, stops and prevents mold. It says to spray, spray it until it's saturated. And I wanna use actual spray, not the string. I don't want it dripping wet, I just want to spray it because I'm going to do a couple wipes and you want to use gloves. And they're going directly into the trash. I'm going to do this a couple times. So now what I've did is the piece that I cut out, we took it outside, traced it on a board and then recut it. So now we got a piece that fits in there almost identical. But what I wanna do, this does have a little flex and this doesn't come out very far. So we're gonna take a one by, trimmed it. We're gonna bolt this onto here and then that'll give us extra support on the back there. So that'll be bolted up like that and then we'll screw this down Bondo these seams, sand them, and we'll be ready to start coating. Now that we got all the mold cleaned up, we let it dry out. We're gonna put our uh, piece of wood that we cut to go in here. We wanna get that nice and snug. And we're gonna screw this down, and then we're gonna put our, our brace under here. Bring it right up to the top so it's got extra support. That way, this doesn't flex at all. And I know, I know where they're at, but I'll mark them just to, if you guys are ever have to hit studs or something, before you put the board, 
mark where the wood's at underneath it. Now I know I need to hit that mark to have it bite into the wood underneath it. When you ever screw one into the counties, you want to screw it in, uh, have it sink into the, the wood a little. That way we can fill it and be flat. You never want it to stick up. And a little, a little trick if you have to, instead of pre-drilling like a, a hole, you can take a flathead and just make a mark where you're gonna put it. And that'll help it sink, sink down into the wood. Now we know that's not going to move on us. We're going to butt this up there tight. And I'm going to get it level. Be good to have a straight edge so you know, because you don't want this bowed up and then you put the board under and it's bowed up. You want to make sure it's nice and level. Um, and we can use this. If you don't have a long level, make sure you got a straight edge. Kind of see, push that down, so it needs to come down just a little. See that? To make it flat. So I'll pre-drill. And I'm just holding down with the straight edge, and you're gonna put these in. Same thing on this side. Hold down with the straight edge. Nice and straight. So now, see how it's bowed? If I would have followed that, we would have had a little bow right there. But now, once everything gets sucked down, it'll be nice and straight. And we got good, good support back there. Not gonna have to worry about anything falling all over back there with when you add weight to the sink and fill it up with water. Okay, now that we've got the, the piece repaired, the mold taken care of, now we're going around and filling in all the seams. And I like to use Bondo if you can. Uh, I Bondo these, the, the seams and gaps that are most critical. If we want to be the strongest, I use Bondo on those. If I Bondo with everything out here, it'd wipe the whole house out, the homeowner's living here, so I'm not gonna use Bondo on everything, just the main parts. Now I'm using a uh, fast setting sheetrock mud and just mixing it up and I'm just jamming it into any seam or gap that we have. And then I'll scrape it smooth. So I'm just going around everywhere and filling in the, any seams. You can see how it fills it in, any holes or gaps you have. And even if there doesn't look like there's a gap there, it's good to fill it. Try to fill it at least. You'd be surprised that it might take some of the material in, in the seam. And then once that's dry, we'll come by, sand it all smooth, clean the counter tape everything off and then we'll be coating. We only recommend the drywall mud for stuff like this. It's not really structural by any means. It's just a kind of a seam that, that epoxy would fall into. We want to make sure we get it filled. So now it's time to sand all that stuff we filled. I'm going to go around Sand these edges really good. We didn't peel off the epoxy on these edges because they're stuck really, really well. Um, also, uh, we're gonna take our time back here and make sure we get this transition really good where we put the new piece of wood, but it's it's definitely stout. And what I did, uh, I also went and caulked this back edge because there was a lot of gaps there and I just didn't want epoxy running down there and wasting it. Um, so I used a paintable caulk. Since we're doing a gray primer, I, I got a gray gray caulk in there just so everything looks good and matches. So we got our vacuum hooked up to 
Right, we got our sander hooked up to the vacuum and when you put the, the sanded pads on, make sure you got these holes lined up. A lot of people will just slap these on um, even without a vacuum and it just shoots dust everywhere. These are designed to suck the, the dust up as you go. So it's always good to just frequently switch out your pads because what happens is uh, get some hard stuff from the Bondo. The drywall mud doesn't really do it, but the Bondo will kind of get heated up and then make these little balls on there and it doesn't sand as well. You want to swap those out. And probably the best is like an 80 grit. And I'm hitting, I'm hitting everything because I want to make sure I don't have any uh, like loose wood fibers or something anywhere else. So I'm just buzzing over the whole surface real quick as I go. So when you guys are sanding these faces, make sure you're not scuffing up the counters and cabinets and hitting the cabinets, because if you come down, you can easily gouge into the cabinets. I opened the door here because I didn't want to scuff up the top here with the sander. You want to be careful with that. Also, if your, your edges are square, you want to round those. Always make sure you have a little bit of a rounded edge. These are 45, so they're fine. Um, but yeah, I'll continue this. No need to really show you guys all this. It's pretty self-explanatory. So now I'm gonna wipe it down with some clean rags. I'm just using water on this, just cause it's a wood surface. Our, our primer's a water-based primer, it's not gonna affect it. If you're going over like Formica granite, something like that, a smooth surface, you wanna use uh, denatured alcohol or acetone. Um, cause that'll clean it really good. Obviously, this isn't really dirty. I just wanna really make sure we get any dust or anything that's left from the sanding process off. So go around and do my edges. And always try to remember where you stopped. That way you don't miss any spots. Or just go and do the whole top. All right, so I, I always like to go by my the, the feel of my hand instead of just eyesight. You can feel stuff that you wouldn't see on a counter. Make sure it's nice and clean. Anytime you, you feel a little chunk or something, just brush it off. Um, and then make sure you get your edges really good and also do the same thing on your edges. Run your hand across it. Because that's the last thing you want is you get your counter done and then your edge has some, some debris or chunks in it that you, you didn't see with your eye. That's pretty much it. Wipe it down real good, make sure it's nice and clean. And then once that's done, we'll go to the, the next step that's plastic and everything off and then we'll start to coat this thing. So as you can see, we plasticed everything off. And what we like to do is get a thick sheet of plastic for the, the floor. And we run around and cut it all out so we don't have creases and stuff that you can trip on. And we've kept it far enough away from the edge to where we could tape to the floor everywhere. So this bottom piece on the floor is nice and tight. It fits really even. And then we took the painter's plastic, draped it from the bottom edge here, made sure we got a nice tight seam here all the way to the floor and taped it back. That way when I'm over here doing the counter, I'm not like dealing with plastic because what'll happen is if you have plastic just draped out, um, the epoxy will get on there. It'll start getting sticky. You'll be walking around and they'll be sticking to your feet and you'll be pulling the plastic and, and sometimes it rips down. So you definitely, Want to take your time, plastic it really good, just like we did here, it looks really good. And then also, before you do your coating, make sure you dry fit your sink. Sorry. Make sure you dry fit your sink because you don't, the last thing you want to do is get your counter done, go to put your sink in and it doesn't fit and you got to try to cut stuff out. You can cut through the epoxy if you have to, but there's always that chance that it'll chip up or, or something can happen and affect the surface. So always dry fit your sink. 
make sure you got it in there good. And then what we like to do is we've got a sheet of plastic we got right here, and we're gonna we're gonna plastic this all off. That way we don't have epoxy running down underneath the sink. So we'll do that, and then we'll get to coating this counter. So we've already dry fit the sink, and then what I like to do is tape underneath the the wood on the sink. That way I got a piece of tape all the way around. This is the easiest way to do it. And then just come in, fold, fold them back so you get a straight line, and then just set it in there. And I like to fold it under, get a straight line there, go up as straight as, straight as you can get it. It's okay to have some free play. It doesn't have to be perfectly tight, you just don't want the plastic sitting up, being able to come out and, and hit the top of the epoxy. So what will happen is if you tape on this edge right here, a lot of times the epoxy will get behind that tape and then it'll start running down onto there. Since we've got it taped underneath, the is just gonna flow in there and it's just gonna sit down in here. So I'll also talk about, we took the oven out and didn't wanna move the fridge because it's very heavy. So what we did is push it to one side. We took the thick plastic, ran it all the way to the floor and I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna run a lot of epoxy out that edge. Some's gonna drip down there, but that's why we got the plastic. Always tape it high, that way if your roller hits it, it doesn't get on there. And then since the dishwasher closes so tight here, where I won't be able to get under here, we've opened it up, plasticed it all off. All right, so we're getting ready to prime. We've got our primer mixed up. I'm going to de-shed the roller. Always make sure you de-shed the rollers when you're using a, a nap roller. We like a three inch nap roller. These are from uh, Home Depot. These seem to be the best rollers for non-shedding. You always want to de-shed them though. So, uh, three-eighths nap, and then they're the, well, that's, that's so three-eighths nap, and then smooth the semi-smooth services. We get them in six packs, they sell them singly. These are the best rollers, we've been using them for a long time. So now that I'm ready, what, what you want to do always, you got to sign the counter, okay? So we're gonna sign this counter. Ligari. Now we know this is Ligari. Everything plastic off, counters clean. We ran our hand over everything. We've signed the counter. Now we recommend using a uh, like a paint tray, a roller tray. Dip your epoxy or your your primer in that, it is an epoxy primer, but dip your primer in that. It's really easy and you can be consistent with it, but we do this a lot, so I'm just gonna pour some out and we're gonna start coating. So if you haven't noticed, everything we do is kind of the same, same thing. You pour a bead out, you roll it around, cross roll it. And when you're going over a a porous surface like this, it is going to soak up the primer a little more. And if we were trying to do, say we were trying to do a white uh, countertop, we might need to do two coats of, of primer. So now I'm just stretching this out to where it's all nice and even. And I don't like to do my edges until I get the top done. That way if I gotta bend over or something, I'm less likely to touch that edge with primer on it. So now I got a nice even coat. I don't have thick spots. You can tell by how the roller sounds. It sounds even all the way through. If I had a thick spot, it would the, the sticky sound would kind of go away. 
Now I'll hit my edges. Make sure I get the, the bottom. So these, these edges are 45 on the top, then they go straight, then they 45 again. Notice we put a piece of tape on this backsplash, that way when our roller's touching, it's not knocking a bunch of debris off of the, the sheetrock there. It's a little thick right here, so I'm gonna spread it out a little bit more. Just right here. And see how we over taped? If I just taped one strip, I'd probably hit the wall here. So always tape a little extra on your corners. Hope I'm happy with the top. The final pass. Always look, make sure you got it all coated. And sometimes when you do the, the corners, it'll leave a, leave a puddle on the top. So just keep an eye on that. Cause you'll want to thin that out. And if this goes on thick, it's not its not gonna affect it. The only thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna take longer to dry. The dog's about to go, go in the bedroom. Alright, we got the dog put up now. You can only take so much a, a, a yapping in the background. And if, if I'm rolling primer out and I see chunks or something in it, pull them out as you go. Don't just think the epoxy is going to cover it. There's really no different than uh, from from applying our primer to doing like a paint job. Basically, this similar process. The only difference is a it's a lot superior product. It's it's an epoxy based product, so it's gonna be a lot more durable than like an actual paint. And this seam right here could be, a, anytime you got an unlevel surface where the seams are, um, honestly, we, we should have sanded that a little better. But the amount of stuff that we had to do to this from what we expected, we kind of just need to get it done. They, they want their kitchen back. So if they're okay with that. I explained to them, you might see a faint like ghost line right there. But they put, they got a lot of stuff that goes right here. So they're not worried about it. And you always want to, if you're doing this for a customer, you always want to explain to them the options. Like, you know, there's always a chance that you could see a, a faint ghost line or, or something different where the seams are because the, the woods on level are not as perfectly even. gonna roll these edges until I'm done because I'm probably gonna get some debris from those edges since they're they're the cut edge where they cut cut the wood at Always double check. All right, now that I'm 
happy with the top. Do a quick walk around, make sure everything's covered good. I don't have any separation or anything from, from some contaminations on the surface. Edges look great. So I shouldn't have to touch the top again, so I'm gonna roll these edges. Anytime you have a raw edge like this, you almost always get stuff on your roller. All right, so that's how you apply a primer. Pretty simple. We'll give this about an hour, hour and a half. If you can put a fan on it, um, it'll dry a lot faster, but you wanna make sure it's, you wanna go on as sticky, but not like wet. So if it's sticky and it's stuck really good, it's not pulling up on your fingers, you're, you're good to go over the primer. All right, so I got, I got all the product mixed up. We're doing silver base. And I always like to just double check measurements. So we always, we always pour out of the jugs into five gallon buckets, measuring buckets, make sure they're right on the, on the money for uh, the amounts. So everyone knows the drill, we're gonna pour. So this is my base coat. So I'm gonna pour down the middle. Keep your, your uh, beads you pour out kind of even. It's obviously a little wider here, but I gotta go back in the corner. That one's pretty good. So now, we've de-shedded the roller. So now we're just gonna move this product around. And I'm not running it off the edge just yet. And I'm, I'm using my roller as a squeegee. See how it's not rolling? I'm applying a little pressure. That way I can move this product around quickly. Such a beautiful color. And if you get spots where it's wanting to roll off the edge, just push it back up. There's no point in there's no point in dripping this off the edge just yet. What I'm doing is just soaking up the roller and then pressing it down in there. I'll get that last. That way if I had to lean over or something, I'm not just totally getting all over me. But see, if I wouldn't have uh, caught this back edge, I'd be losing a lot of product back there. Which it doesn't hurt anything. It's not like you're ever gonna see it. But it's just waste the product. I'd rather have uh, a thicker countertop than just wasting some down the back that's kind of useless. So it actually poured this out really well. Really even everywhere. And here's the spot where I don't really want to roll it over the edge because of the plastic. So I'll get a bead there. to pay on how that plastic sticks we might have to tape it off to pull it back a little all right so now I got the tops pretty pretty well filled out it's pretty even coat everywhere so now so still a little left in the bucket um, I'm gonna pour just a small bead right along here All my edge, we don't, we don't want to leave it in the bucket too long. So I'm going to go around all of my edges and just pour it out. 
right on the edge there, or close to it. And every time you move, I notice I tilt the bucket back. If I, if I move around like this, it's gonna start dripping, and I don't want it to drip everywhere. The more product you get close to the edge, what the counters do, they continuously flow over the edge because it's leveling out. And as long as you got enough product to flow over the edges, your edges will look really good. It'll, it'll look like you cut a, cut a piece of stone out of a, a big counter or something. It won't look like a man-made counter. And there's just a little left in here. Just in case I need some touch up on my edges or something. I don't need to scrape it out. So now what I'll do, is now I'm gonna go through and work it right to the edge. Not necessarily going over the edge. It's gonna start dripping now, but that's fine. Now I'm gonna swirl it. This is just gonna bring any remaining bubbles to the surface. This is also going to help agitate the metallics to give us a nice uneven uh, marble effect. And as I'm doing that, I'm rolling my edges. So I'll swirl a little on the top, roll my edges. And since I got a 45 underneath, I want to make sure I roll that underneath edge. And the point of this is to make sure the edges continuously flow over. And I don't want to just try to roll all my edges without getting more product on it. So every time I swirl, I'm getting more product on the roller. It's a little thin right here, so I'm gonna pour the rest of this, this out on this counter. And we don't have much. And you can tell when you're rolling it if you got a really thin spot or if it's just way thicker than everywhere else. If that's the case, like if you had a, say you had a really thick spot here and a thin spot over there, just take the bucket and just hold the bucket here, scoop it back into the bucket and go pour it over there, then roll it all out again. So now, we've already made up our, our black highlights. So we're gonna do she chose, uh, I think it's 34 on her website. And it's, uh, it's like a vein pattern, silver, black, a little bit of white. And so what I'm gonna do, is I figured since it's got like an L shape, I'm gonna run a vein from out here, kind of down there and have it split off. And maybe run back into here, then maybe we'll add another vein here. Uh, but we'll kind of kind of split it up a little and I'm not going to do a lot because I can always I'm going to come back and add to it I want to make sure I like the vein but I think the vein should should come out something like that and then we'll split it off right here like that we'll run another one Now that we got the black done, we'll take some spray paint. And we're gonna add, just for some added effect. We're gonna add right on that edge. Right on both sides of that. And we'll 
will take a little white. Out on that edge. Maybe do a, do a little one there. So the more the more random you can be, the better. And then we'll do the same thing since we got a white band on that edge. We'll follow this edge with white. So now I kind of got the colors that I want. Now to blend it, I like to use. I like to use a pool trough. Because what happens is I can be nice and skinny with it or I can turn it sideways and I can pull a fatter vein through it. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll start on this way, work my way over, then I'll go to that side. So all we're gonna do is just follow this vein. And, and we just wanna be random with it. side. We're going to follow that. And I'm going all the way into the vein because I want this vein to have a lot of depth to it so it doesn't just look like a, a single vein. And we're going to come out here and just blend this in. See how I'm holding it a little flatter? and it kind of flattens it off more. See that? That's what I mean, I can hold, I can make a skinny line or I can kind of flatten it off. And you can't screw this up, this technique is really awesome. We're also gonna do some dispersing effects. And just be cautious, once you, once you get this trial dirty, it's going to be dripping. I'm going to pull off that backsplash, make sure I get all up in there. Now, I want to carry some black into the back there too, just so you can see it. So I'll take my spray paint, add a little more black. See, it's creating some really cool effects. And we're still gonna hit it with some dispersing effects too. And then since this trial's square, or not, it's not square, we're gonna wanna get into the corners with some, uh, another trial. And I like to use, I mean, any, any square trial will work. So now I think I'm gonna add some more white in some spots. So, cause I like how the white's kind of creating a cool effect. So I'm gonna grab my white. I'll just add, add a little right in here. And now I'm not really flattening it off as much. I'm 
more random you can be, the better. So now I think the, I think the color's probably good. I might want to widen, I might want to widen this out a little here to make it look like a, almost like a river. Like it kind of started wide right here and kind of flowed in. So all you need to do is just kind of flatten this off. Pull that out a little and then just flow that back in. Now it looks a lot, a lot wider right here. Once we hit this dispersing on it, it's gonna make it uh, blend even better. So now I'm gonna go look at my edges. If I see, sis, come over here. You can kind of see how it just kind of everything stops right there. So I like to use a margin trial or square, and I'll just come onto that wall and kind of bring that out randomly, just so it doesn't look like I, I stopped everywhere. I'm not gonna do it at every point. So now we'll disperse it with 91% isopropyl, and we're gonna just spritz the, the surface. We're not like misting it like that. We're at, I'm actually wanted to, I want some bigger effects in it. And watch how it just really brings this counter to life. And a lot of these will go away because I'm doing it so early, but I want to help blend all these veins together. And you can always come back and, and spray a little more as needed to, to, to keep this effect going. But we put this product down real quick, so we're gonna wanna maybe come back and hit it again. So as you can see, it's all flowing over the edges here. See how that little vein is just nice flowing over, so it looks like we cut this out of a, a rock. Over here, guys, all these are flowing over. It's all just flowing over amazing. And that's kind of what you want, same thing here. Everything is just starting to continuously flow over. In about 45 minutes, I'll take my paint stick, come around the bottom, scrape all the drip edges. And if I, if I want this cratered, like dispersing effect look, I would spray it again, but I'm probably not gonna do it again. I just wanna help blend these colors in together. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm going around and looking at all different angles, seeing if I got any chunks or anything from uh, the mix and paddle, because uh, it was used. Anything debris that's in there, I'll, I'll pull it out right now. And also what you want to do is, you can see how it's not flowing over evenly, it's dripping. All, all, all you need to do, and you can do this with a brush, just roll that out again. And that'll help it start to flow over evenly. Here's another one right here. We just want to want to feather that off and help it kind of kind of flow over. Um, I usually do it with the brush. We just don't have a brush with us, so brushes work the best. But maybe even get some product on your brush and help that continuously flow over. You can see how awesome these edges are looking. I mean, it's you can't get a better look. We haven't touched it at all. That's just having the product even on the top close to the edge, pouring your color out to the edge and it's constantly flowing over that edge and making that edge look really dialed. If you guys are doing a top coat, I mean, it's really not necessary because you can lightly sand any imperfections or debris that's in the epoxy, but we're not, <clears throat> we're not gonna do a top coat right away. So I wanna make sure I get all the, anything that's in it out.
Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media. If you're interested in a custom floor or countertop kit, visit our website at www.ligari.com or see the description below for more information.